So as you guys know, I have built a lot of bases in my time. I mean, obviously we've done the stuff on the Hermitcraft server. I've done loads of bases on there. I've done different redstone bases and everything like that. But I was thinking the other day, I have never tried my best to actually compact a base. I've, I've always compacted redstone contraptions. I make them as small as possible. Why have I never seen if I can create an actual base as small as possible? So today we're going to try that out. Now we do have some requirements for this thing. It needs to have an anvil, a crafting bench, a bed, an ender chest, some form of storage, a potato, carrot, wheat, and beetroot farm. It needs to have some form of automatic smelting system. It needs to have a potion brewer, two villagers, a melon and pumpkin farm, and also an enchanting table. Now I've laid out a five by five area right here, and I've already filled in quite a decent chunk of it with this first farm. Now this is the wheat, carrot, and potato farm. And if we get this right, you can see that it is extraordinarily fast. This thing is totally ridiculous and it produces tons upon tons of wheat and it also works with carrots, potatoes and everything like that. And we're going to be using those items to hopefully trade with the villagers that we're going to get in the system. But it has taken up about a quarter of our area here, which that's not a very good start. This is difficult. This is seriously difficult. Trying to work out how to slot all of this in is pretty tough. And I've also added two new things to the list, which is a fully automatic sugar cane farm and also an infinite water source. And I think maybe if we create the infinite water source a little bit like this. So there it is. And then we can actually stand in there and we can still use our fully automatic wheat farm. So that's a smart way of doing it. We've got our ender chest here and we can also fill in this area with different things. Uh, we've got a chest down at the bottom which is a form of storage but I think we definitely need more of that. And that also gives us a lot more options when it comes to where we're actually placing, where we're actually placing the sugarcane farm. So that could actually go there and we could double up that storage as a pickup zone for the sugarcane. So that goes in like that and then we just need to have some form of observer which is going to be detecting when the sugarcane grows from this block right here. And we can actually do that off in this direction which is going to make the redstone nice and neat. Okay, okay, that's good, that's good, that's good, that's good. This is coming together. Man, this is so much fun. I want to do more of these things. Okay, I take that back. I cannot work out how to make this sugarcane farm not turn into a stupidly, ridiculously rapid firing clock in this tiny little space right here. Repeats are set to four ticks. That's definitely not going to work. That's just going to be a slower paced clock. What we need to do is we need to get repeats set to four ticks or some way to extend out the pulse and then shorten the pulse and run that into the piston so that this fires and then retracts before the original pulse has stopped working and stopped pulsing. I'm tempted to just go back to a regular bud switch here. I still haven't managed to fix up the sugarcane farm, but we do have some extra bits going on down at the bottom right here. So we've got some storage that is entirely accessible from this point. This seems to be the point where the player is actually going to be standing. And we've got access to an enchanting table. We also have one, two, three double chests, which is very handy. And then if we head over to this side, we also have access to this guy. <laughs> I thought because there isn't really much we can do in this area, it would be cool to have a jukebox on the inside of the base. Oh, but that has just distracted me. That's literally just been a distraction from trying to work out this kind of confusing thing. And I think I might just have to bite the bullet and create like a monostable circuit that runs through into this thing. I've just come up with an awesome idea. I think if I place in this guy right here next to this daylight sensor, that daylight sensor is going to detect changes in daylights, obviously because it's a daylight sensor, and then it will give an update through the observer, meaning that this thing will fire every now and again, which means that we should now have ourselves a fully automatic sugarcane farm, and that is considerably smaller than the design that we originally came up with. So we're doing pretty well for space. We've got the bed up at the top. That's just kind of laid in like that. And when we respawn, we'll spawn on this block right here. Uh, I think this is going to be like the main block where we're going to be standing for most things. Or could it be this one? We do have access to every single chest from that area, including the Duke box. I think maybe, or it might have to be this one. 
We might have to have like a pressure plate on the floor, which will stop that water going anywhere. And then this is the block that we stand on. Because yeah, then, then we have access to pretty much everywhere. Okay. The tricky part here is going to be finding where to put in the villagers. I, I have absolutely no clue where those guys are going to be going. Things are going well. Uh, we are doing really, really well here. We're going to need melon and pumpkin seeds. And what I was thinking is, is that we can actually use... We could use the same block of dirt for both the melon and the pumpkins. Okay, so these guys right here, they're both connected in to this block of dirt. So that one... And that one are going to do the same thing. And it can either grow a melon or a pumpkin on this block right here. So technically we've killed two birds with one stone right there. And we're going to have both the melon and the pumpkins growing on that singular block. So then we just need some way to connect it up. And hopefully if any items land on top of that, yes, they do get picked up by the hoppers. And they end up in this chest right here. So that chest is going to be basically the input chest for both the sugarcane farm and also our melon and pumpkin farm which means that that's a large quantity of it done now this this thing right here is actually going to be like the official standing location in the base you can see we've got access to pretty much everything right there you do have to be a little bit careful but we've even got access to the jukebox and then if you want to get out all you have to do is just flip up the trap doors and you can jump out we have got some creative uses of space right here, and I think I have just come up with another one in that we don't have to have... A, we don't have to have the villages in the same block, and B, we can sit them down in, like, boats. We can put them both in one boat. And then that can be where we trade with them. So those guys can sit there. I guess these two blocks are probably going to have to just be dead blocks. Unfortunately, there's not a whole lot that we can do in that area. Yeah, out of the bunch, unfortunately. But if we just get ourselves a boat and chuck it down on one of these blocks... That, that can be where the villagers go! <laughs> That's epic! I've actually thought of an even better use of the space back there. So instead of having the villagers like we planned originally... Which... Yep, those do actually work. Instead of having the villagers that we planned originally... What we can actually do is we can slot in a super smelter back here. <laughs> I honestly cannot believe. Look at that. <laughs> so hopefully when we stand on our singular block, which we now have about a million trapped trap doors for, we have access to that one, which definitely needs to be a chest. So we have access to that one right there. We have access to the coal one just about. And we have access to the output chest. Just about. <laughs> wow. This is something else. This is seriously something else. And our melon and pumpkin farms are going to be functional. <laughs> One of the things that I'd kind of forgotten about was the brewing station. Huh. This actually could be a little bit of a spanner in the works I'm trying to think how we could do it so we, we want to have it like semi-automated or at least there's there's no real reason for me to want this to be semi-automated but I kind of I kind of do want it to be semi-automated I think I've kind of left this area right here out the back for the villagers so the villagers are going to be going in this sort of zone our brewer is down at the bottom there Maybe if we could just drop down by like a slab, we would be able to actually access it. Because right now, yeah, the hoppers are kind of cutting us off. I suppose all we need is just about access to that block right there. Or alternatively, we could just flip around. But, okay, yeah, we, well, we have something going on here. And then if we just place in a button on this one, and if we were to place in, say, for example... Some nether warts. And then maybe some sugar for speed potions that we would be getting from the sugarcane farm. So I guess that makes sense. If we place in both of those, hopefully they should just fall in order. And they should drop straight in. 
Okay, that's looking good. So we have like a semi-automated system, and then this chest right here is the chest that we would have for our water bottles. Which would all be in that chest there, and hopefully that hasn't messed with any of our access to any of the other many millions of chests that we actually have in this area right here. And then we just need the blaze up in the top, which is no big deal. And that's it. We've got ourselves an automated potion brewing station as well. Wow. This is tessellation. Now hopefully this works as I expected. So if we just give that guy a bit of a nudge. Okay, he is in the minecart. So we have one villager in the minecart. And I kind of want a brown coat villager just for this to be official. <laughs> so we've got one white coat. And we seem to be getting tons upon tons of white coats here. I want to get a farmer, so that we have like the official, yes, that is it. Right, we want to get the official, official villager setup. So now we just need to turn these two off, push this guy across into this zone right here. Both of those should now be within our 5x5 five five area. And that should do it. <laughs> I can't stop laughing at just how ridiculous this thing is. It's ridiculous. Now look, we've got a melon that's grown. We've got daylight cycle turned off, so it's never going to get harvested, but that would work in theory. Now I've just been reading down the list, and I think we just about covered it. We've actually managed to do this thing. Uh, I've added in some extra storage above our villagers, so that sat just up at the top right there. But other than that, it's pretty much unchanged, and it is still... Well, it's daft, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's very daft. This fits within a 5x5x4 five by five by area right here, and if we quickly go down through the list, you'll see everything is fully accessible from this point right here. So, we start things off, and we can drop down through into this bottom area. We have got access to the anvil. That's right there. We've got access to the crafting bench, which is up at the top. We've got access to the bed. We have an ender chest. That's down right about there. We have got lots and lots of storage chests all over the place. We have got a potato, carrot, and wheat farm, which we can use by activating this lever right here, and we can just hold down the right-click button, and we'll pick up all of the items. That's perfect. We have got a super smelter. That's in that corner where we can access the input, the coal input, and also the output down at the bottom. Uh, we have got a potion brewing station, which actually works and uses redstone, and we can access those items from down at the bottom right here. We've got our two villagers, our white coat and our brown coat. We also have a melon and pumpkin farm, that's over there. We've got a sugarcane farm right there, we've got an infinite water, and we have a jukebox, the ever-important jukebox. Wow, <laughs> that's a lot of stuff to fit within a 5x5x4 five by five by area. I'm very impressed with this thing. However, I do also want to issue you guys a bit of a challenge. If you think you can do better than this, and you think you can fit all of that stuff within a smaller space that functions in exactly the same way, then please do let me know. Send me your videos and screenshots and everything like that on Twitter. I would love to see all of this stuff, but this has been a hilariously, hilariously fun project to work on. I'm really, really proud with the end result. I think it looks amazing. But unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, that is all I've got time for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button. And if you really loved it, then make sure to subscribe. But thanks for watching, guys. This has been Mumbo, and I'm out. I'll see you later. Oh, and by the way, check out the latest video on the filming channel.